Hello. Hello. It's um, me, me pie. It's Wednesday and 1 p.m. Actually, for me, 1 p.m. now is super early. Yes. <laughs> we were just talking about I uh, yesterday. I I totally overslept until the till 3 p.m. <laughs> and I really like and then I it's a cycle. I stay up late to catch up with my work and it's just really bad. It's really bad. Uh, I don't know. I just and pass I'm... out. I pass out. You know. <laughs> Yeah. And I'm doing the opposite. Yeah, I'm going to sleep super early and waking up super early as well. So me and Chuck got the internet covered. Yeah. So if you tweet us at any time, we would one of us will reply to you like <laughs> at any time. Um. So yeah, like uh, I hope this is really over really soon. I I I love streaming, but I just like I I I think I need to have a more uh, normal life. <laughs> yeah. I sleep at night, waking up through the day, like be a normal human being. Yeah. That's the goal for post coronavirus, isn't it? Yeah, like this why I think it's good to have a streaming like kind of early ish. But the thing is like I tried to do that on Sunday and uh, nobody was watching. I, I guess everybody <laughs> was like because I before the, the like on Saturday we had the uh, remote piece of Python there like the Python pizza and I would I would t talk in more details in a bit but you know I stay up like everybody stay up late basically so I was expecting people uh, uh, like you know like me <laughs> so yeah uh, yeah anyway let me share my screen if I could oh you can see my settings things okay fine share screen um, yeah, it's uh, I I'm st I still hasn't get the hang of this like sharing screen thing. I think I'm still very bad at it. Okay, right. So um, f I think the first announcement or like first things we got to talk about is about the um, PyCon Hatchery program. So um, we are following very closely with PyCon, and um, so actually I was involved in two of these hatchery programs. So one of them is the beginners uh data science workshop, data, or data workshop. So we cover like visualization and everything and also data manipulation. And uh, this is meant to be for beginners. Uh, either you're a Python beginner or either you're like a beginner in data uh, analysis, data science, then, um, you know, it uh, will be like two um, Saturdays. We only do like a three and a half hour for each Saturday, each Saturday. So it will be like two session um, workshop because uh, we would cover different time zone and want people to, you know, um, have a more, you know, uh, relaxed pace of learning, but you will learn a lot um, during these two sessions. Um, and it's also minority focused. So we give priority for um, uh, people who identify as minority. So if you're applying or if you have friends applying, please uh, make sure that you mention this, that, uh, you know, you got, you know, um, so we, we know uh, that we need to give you priority. And also we are looking for mentors. So if you are like already, you know, um, experienced in like, uh, you know, Python or a little bit about uh, data science, we love you. We need you. Um, please get in touch. <laughs> also, you can find a form here. So just go to this website, um, us.pycon.org. And uh, so this is the first um, first hatchery program that I am involved in. There's the second one that this is a mentor screen. So this one I'm helping Tanya. Uh, my friend Tanya, that like she, uh, you know, she run this um, mental sprint program. So what it is, so what is a sprint? So sprint usually happens in a, in a conference or like, or even it's not a conference because I run London Python sprints. So we work on a open source project together uh, with uh, the maintainers and we try to get some issues sorted. Um, so uh, we are we are calling for projects actually. So if you have a project that um, you, you want more, uh, new contributors and especially, you know, um, uh, uh, you know, people from the minority group, uh, then please, uh, you know, previously we have really good projects, you know, we have like uh, TensorFlow, you know, um, C Python even, um, and, you know, mm -hmm. all these cool projects. So uh, please. Um, yeah, yeah, even, yeah, even uh, Pi, Pi, uh, Pi PI, yeah, they, they are actually like, uh, I, I've worked, work in uh, the warehouse project a bit as well. So this one. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, so Tanya will be in touch. So if you know Tanya, you can um, get more information from her. If not, you can also find me. I could um, also answer your questions. Um, so also, like, of course, we're looking for people to participate. So if you don't have a project, um, but if you want to contribute to open source, if you're a beginner, please, um, this is the, the best place to learn how to do open source contribution because you would be mentored There'll be somebody who holds your hand and help me. So this will be a, um, you know, um, a, a kind of a full day. We are thinking about like doing, um, 
you know, different time zones. So uh, you can join either one of the time zones. We try to cover APAC, uh, Europe, and uh, the States, you know, America. And um, so, yeah, like, uh, just join, and then uh, I, I'm sure that you'll find a time that is suitable for you. So, um, yeah. So this is also, like, on the same website, uh, us.pycon.org. Yeah. Are you coming, Lace? Yeah. Do you want to join yes. this? Which one do you want yes, to join? Yes, I do. Um, you see, so the the twentieth one with the sprinting sounds really cool because the open source contribution is something that we've been talking about for ages now, and I I'm always like yes 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 I'm gonna get there I'm gonna get there and I actually never actually get there, except for when I'm doing Python sprints with you. Cool, because like Python sprint is not now is like quite difficult because uh, we we have a very good local group uh, that you know is very tight but uh, tightly needed. But now because we are all like we are going global, so it's uh, more difficult to get people together. But uh, hopefully we will have uh, a Python sprint back soon. So um, yeah, <laughs> with Python after Python, yes, hey. So we have um, I I don't know like Coco. Your name, sorry, is a bit difficult to pronounce. Coca, Coca Dam. <laughs> so yeah, like uh, yeah, we we have meat me pie, so it's also related to food, <laughs> like pie and pizza. <laughs> we'll talk about pie and pizza afterwards, actually. So um, so what's the next thing? Actually, it's the pie and pizza, right? The yes, next thing on our agenda. Yes. Okay. So yeah, pie and pizza, yay! Um, yeah. So it is really good. Actually, it's like quite surprising that it's really good. Um, the lace you. Were you there or not? Like maybe you you weren't there. I couldn't make it because I had a deadline for that day. <sighs> but I saw everyone talking about it. I was so mad at myself because I couldn't make it. Oh, it must be it must be very sad because it's it's really really good and um so it's kind of uh, it's very surprising that you know a lot of people are, are speculating about you know whether an online conference will work because uh, we have. Uh, a good community that we always like meet several times a year in conferences and this is the first time you know um i think it's one of the uh you know first um python uh, online conference in you know um after co the quarantine um so yeah so uh, thank you so much for the organizer first of all mm -hmm. they did a really good job even though we have us like uh, hiccups with youtube <laughs> yes yeah, 94. Okay. Yeah, now I know your name. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, yeah, we have a hiccup with YouTube. So what happened? Like, I okay, now I'm streaming on Twitch, so I can say bad things about YouTube. And what happened is that actually it's right after my talk when I was chairing for the session and um, we just got like cut off at the YouTube stream. So the plan with the with the uh, conference was that, you know, all the speakers go on Zoom and then from Zoom, we would stream to a private stream on YouTube, um, you know, for the participants. But like suddenly YouTube stopped our stream and then um, and then, uh, you know, we don't know why. And then the organizer need to fix it. We take a technical break for the people, you know, to we say, oh, come back after 15 minutes or something. And the organizer check that like uh, YouTube block us because we have some violation I don't really understand because there's no way we violate anything, right? We are not showing adult content, like uh, we are not doing any copyright thing because nobody's playing any music or any videos that is copyrighted. And um, there are speculation that like, because in my slides, there's actually a, uh, a Twitch um, as a logo of showing my Twitch. So maybe that's why, uh, because they don't like Twitch. And um, so, yeah, like we, we don't know why there's no no solid reason. And um, we end up having because we were banned for seven days. We, uh, we can't use the YouTube stream for seven days. So we get everybody to um, to go on Zoom and continue there. Luckily, like it's doable. But but like at that time, there's like so many people are offering help. I, like it's really impressive that like everybody's trying to make this happen. And people are very, you know, um, forgiving that, you know, we have these technical difficulties, but it's still a good conference. And uh, we have really good line of speakers. I can't stress enough that, like, a lot of the people that I know are good, uh, like, you know, on on this um, on this uh, lineup, which is really good. And um, also, and uh, yeah, also, like, we have this Discord channel that people can chat. So um, I... I'm quite surprised that people really like uh, really chatting on the Discord, and I found like a few familiar names that you know I usually meet them in the conference, and now like I see them on the Discord is uh, it's very it's very nice. 
and we stay actually we stay on Discord until one a.m. The just for the after parties, everybody grab a beer at home and just like chat. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why, like the next day when I was streaming, I was like really like is I was having a hard time. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is what you miss, Lace. This, this is like what you miss. So much fun. Yeah, this is what you miss. So yeah. <laughs> okay, don't cry. The only we thing, will. Like, the yeah. only thing, but it's okay. We will make pajamas like as awesome as this, so you would be able to um, have it. And yeah. So um okay this yeah. is this is uh okay we have something about Python uh, news from Guido actually <laughs> the B our BDFL himself so um yeah so <laughs> Python uh, 3.9 alpha uh, is out and like there's some new paths that is uh, incorporated and also I think this is quite cool like start or remove prefix suffix I think uh it's actually quite useful when you are like uh, manipulating data I think and um and the, the 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 easter egg is that like we are talking about having stefan one of the code developer to uh speak at pycon ie uh about this re new release <laughs> so um and of course like we are looking for people to test it so if you if you are a developer you want to test whether your, your packages work or the packages that you're using works then um yeah the where well, you see this from guido there's like a lot of people have seen it already so yeah yeah. So. And if you want to send us a tweet, uh, just talking about it would be we would appreciate it as well. And you might get to show up at Midnight Pie. Yeah, or like anybody have found something interesting, so you can do it before Stefan um do his talk. You can uh, I think they can speak at Pycon Island. <laughs> I think Stefan will be there. And <laughs> yeah, so. Yeah. Again, because last year he did in Pycon, uh, Pycon he did the three point eight. Everything you need to know about the 3.8 version. And it was actually a quite cool talk. The link is on YouTube. And so as soon as I saw Guido's tweet, I was like, hmm, I wonder if Stefan would like to do another talk for us, just showing everything that is new. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, that's where that came from. Yeah, right. So um, what's, what's, uh, what's this uh, thing? I think Lace found out this, so maybe like you can tell us a little bit more about this then? Yes. So everyone knows about like how most places are doing COVID um, actions on like putting stuff for free and everything. So COVID is also doing that. And they have some pretty cool um, computer science courses all for free and including, including that one that using Python for research it seems really, really interesting. It's a five weeks course. It's a Harvard course and it's free. And it will be free until I think the end of this pandemic times that no one actually knows how for how long it's going. Yeah. Um, oh, but this is quite artificial cool. intelligence. Yeah. Yeah. Machine learning one and the artificial intelligence yeah. with Python is also quite cool. Yeah. yeah. I like all of them. I was like, I don't have that many weeks left. Yeah, I think uh, so. Is it is it like available? Like, is there a time limit or not? No, as soon as you enroll, the only thing is you need to enroll before they go back to being charged for. So right. if you enroll now, then you can you can do it on your own pace. Oh, OK, good. I, I mean, do that afterwards. So um, I have done some courses on Coursera, but I think I w want to, you know, brush up, brush up my skills like afterwards, like when I have time, like you said, <laughs> I think. Yeah, I think like uh, go go like especially if you're interested, because I know that there are lots of people interested in machine learning and AI. I, I, I did a little bit with them. Uh, I, I had, you know, I was a data scientist, but I'm now like more into uh, software development, but I also, I'm interested to develop software for AI. So um, that would be something that like, cause I'm kind of doing a little bit related to that because I'm working for like Terminus DB, a graph database, which is uh, very, you know, important for like machine learning and AI because data is very important. Um, so, but I, I want to, yeah, I, I would, uh, so yeah get all these like quality resources from Harvard for free. <laughs> Very good suggestion. Thank you, Lace. No problem at all. I really like that web programming with Python as well, because apparently um, Python, like Java, Python and JavaScript are the top um, programming languages used for web development. I mean, JavaScript is still miles away from usage in general, but Python is still quite well used. So it, it seems quite interesting as well. I'm intrigued. 
Yeah, and game dev, I know, like, it's also a very some a very something very popular in the prog- like uh, you know software development world. Lots of young people want to be a game developer, obviously. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I think uh, that's it for our um, pie chat. And uh, without further ado, I think we should go into uh, interview with, with Naomi. It went very well. I really like uh, you know talking to her and because um, I, I met her a few times before. Uh, conferences I think having a, like a, a more like semi-personal but you know a kind of one-to-one uh, interview is the first time so uh, let's watch it together and uh, we would be back after afterwards so stay tuned So um, yeah, thank you so much, uh, Naomi. Uh, I'm so honored to have you uh, here because uh, I think we have only briefly meet in uh, one of the uh, conferences. Uh, I think yeah. it's the Euro Python in Edinburgh, right? Maybe there, there was a breakfast. Uh, we met there. I think maybe we met at the first pile in Didium briefly too, weren't you? Oh yes, the yeah. Day? There was the mm-hmm. Transcode uh, workshops. Yeah, that mm-hmm. that one is amazing as well. So yeah, like uh, we have. You know, met each other because we have been um, going to conferences and uh, and like uh, I think yeah. And then last time we have to uh, we are both speaking at uh, Pi Amsterdam, so that, that's, that's right. really good. Like I, I I know that you're still active. That's that's really important. I think that's good. So um yeah. So like I think most of the people, because like you have kind of like a public figure in uh, the Python community, so most people know you as uh you know the director of PSR and also. Um, the the co-founder of Transcode. So, um, so but is there anything that about you you want to let people know that maybe we have missed that, like maybe you have other hats that we haven't um, paid attention. Well, I don't I don't know. I mean, I guess there. Um, I am uh, also the uh, author of the Quick Python book, which is uh, in its uh, third edition now, and um, as kind of a public service. Um, if you go to manning.com these days, uh, until the end of May, that book is free as an ebook. It was one of seven books they decided to release for free to help people um, learn new skills while they were maybe out of action because of the uh, of the of the virus crisis. So, um, you know, I won't get any royalties, but I'm pretty happy if people just go and and take advantage of that deal. And, um, you know, it helps them. That that would make me happy, certainly. So that's, I guess that's one thing. I guess the other thing that I, I claim is that um, I started in uh, humanities. My, my PhD is actually in Latin and Greek. So I've always been a big, um, big fan of human languages as well as computer languages. So um, I've been... Um, been actively kind of brushing up on my um, Spanish and have given some Spanish talks studying Portuguese. Um, not quite ready to give a Portuguese talk yet, but, <laughs> um, uh, and, um, you know, who knows? I, I used to do some modern Greek, so maybe that's next. But so, so that's another interest of mine that, um, I don't know, it's, it's wow. just something that I like. Yeah, that's amazing. I know writing a book is so difficult and now you're just giving it out for free. That's that's really like really good work for the community. I think if people like are downloading it, like please uh, you know, maybe give you a thank you on Twitter. I I, will, <laughs> yeah, I, will, I think that's 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 the way I I think like giving appreciation is also very important in community. And also I think the Brazilian like community will be happy if you can, you know, give a Portuguese talk. I, so. <laughs> I, 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 I would love to. I've got a lot of, a lot of friends in the Brazilian community. It's a very active community. I would yeah. love to someday. Yeah. So, um, okay. So next question. So, um, yeah, like, I think there's something, this is like, personally, I want to know because like, I, I, I always imagine like being, you know, kind of a figure, you know, director of PSF. So what actually do you do like like for this role? Like what do you do? I, I saw you in conferences, but actually what are you doing? Like are you very oh, well, busy? That's, that that's a fair <laughs> question. I've found that most people what should I say? I whatever you think it is, it's probably not that. Um, I think is probably a fair way of putting it. Um and we are approaching elections for the PSF uh, Board of Directors. Uh, nominations for that will open May 6th. And um, May 21st, 
we have a special Slack channel that will be announced um, where we have kind of a 24 hour ask board members whatever you want and there will be board members there all 24 hours from various time zones and so on uh, so that people can ask that question. But I am also um, delighted to, to talk a little bit about that now. So um, it, it's sort of, it's changed over the years. When the PSF was a really tiny organization, the board members pretty much made all the decisions, did all of the things, et cetera. Uh, now the PSF is, um, it's not huge, but it's, it's a full-sized uh, nonprofit. And uh, we have several people on staff. So we've got Eva Yadloska as our executive director. We've got somebody to manage PyCon. We've got somebody to work with sponsorship and, and things like that. We've got somebody supporting infrastructure. So the day-to-day -day operations of uh, making sure that um, a group gets their check or gets their meetup fees paid or that the conference happens, all of those things are handled by staff. So, you know, what then does, does the board do? Well, um, what the board does these days is a, a more traditional board of directors role in that uh, we look at strategy so not specifically what are we going to do tomorrow, but what do we want to do next year, uh, two years, uh, and, and what do we need to do to make sure that the PSF has uh, the funds, the resources that we need to keep this going. Um, and so, you know, we were behind the planning that meant that we have um, a certain amount of money in reserve so that we can actually survive. Uh, the fact that there is no PyCon in person this year, um, that, that, was not, that was not a fast and easy decision to reach, honestly, in terms of how much do we want to do? Why aren't we just giving all of our money to the community right away? Uh, all of those things. So um, it's, it's that kind of strategy type and resource decisions. Uh, we're also uh, there to um, basically be there to make sure that our staff are doing the things that that we think that they should. So, you know, the executive director, Eva, is in charge of all of the PyCon staff, but then she um, has um, as her boss the board of directors and specifically the, the, the chair, uh, because it's hard for somebody to have, you know, 12 bosses, that wouldn't work. But uh, as, as the person that works with her as a partner and makes sure that um, she can, you know, gets feedback and and then I guess the final piece of that is the board. Um, we're now, uh, we have members on, um, I'm trying to think, uh, members on all the continents except Antarctica. I think that, no, 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 not quite. I'm sorry, we, we, we don't at the moment have somebody from South America, but uh, we have had. So, but it's, it's important for the board to be uh, ambassadors in both directions. That is for board members to report to the PSF what they're hearing when they go to conferences or just talk to people or connect with people online. Uh, and then also for those board members to be ambassadors out into the community and explain to people what's going on and, and be willing to talk to people and answer questions and all of that. So specifically, what does that mean? It means reading a lot of emails. Uh, it means hanging out in a, in a dedicated uh, Slack channel. Uh, and it means um, meeting um, several times a year, mostly online. Um, our last meeting in person was in Amsterdam in November. Um, given our current situation, we're not sure when that's gonna happen again. Uh, yeah. But uh, it was two times a year we would meet for longer meetings in person. but. Uh, most of our things are online. And, you know, as an example with, you know, the, the COVID crisis developing and PyCon coming up at the same time, um, there were a group of us on the board who I think from about the beginning of March until um, like March 20th or whatever that three weeks, I think we were pretty much in conversation on the Slack channel every day for hours a day as we tried to track what was going on and then help make 
the right decisions, which you know I think ultimately the right decisions were made. So that that's it. It's not a lot of glamorous. Oh, you go do this, but there's a lot of behind the scenes yeah. communication and um, things like that. Yeah, I feel like it could be quite stressful as well. So kind of. Uh, uh, yeah, it was a long month of March. I will say that. Yeah, but like I think I think we had like the community is kind of adopting. So I think like kind of you handle it very well. Like uh, I know PyCon US is uh, you know make some like changes that I think is the best uh, decision at the moment. So um, yeah, so um, so let's go back to like how you started like what brings you in the um, python community and how like how can you like how you get started when you kind of like you know from not knowing python to like getting more involved and now become the you know in the board of the psf so um and how does that journey affect you um well so um of course everybody's everybody's journey is going to be quite different um, mine started um, a long time ago. I, I, I learned Python at, a, at Linux World in 2001, uh, where this guy, I didn't know who he was at all, but he was there giving a seminar on this language he created. Uh, so I spent a, a day long tutorial with Guido uh, learning, learning Python. And um, there weren't very many people doing Python in those days, obviously, uh, not as many. Um, and I, I thought it was a wonderful language. I was um, the um, head of a computer department at a private school, and we had a requirement that everybody did programming. And we were doing things in Pascal, and then we tried doing things in C, and we were going to try doing things in Java. And I really didn't want to teach a, a bunch of high school students uh, job. Not everybody in a class, okay? A few people really interested would be one thing, but making everybody learn Java, that was a nightmare. Yeah. So um, we switched We switched to Python and I um, started writing school software as well in Python because that was part of my job. So it was easy to use that. And um, then we, we heard that the, the person who was helping me and I, we had both gone and, and picked up Python at the same conference. Uh, we heard they were going to do in 2003, this thing they were gonna call PyCon for the first time in Washington, DC. So we uh, submitted a paper and we went and, you know, had gave a talk at, at the first PyCon. And um, well, that was 17 years ago and this will be the first year that I have not been at PyCon uh, since then. Um, but um, it was um, it was really even then an engaging community, uh, and I kept going back. I was working in education, so I helped uh, do um, what we used to have there. We called uh, BOFs, Birds of a Feather sessions. They were the open spaces, and we did one for education. And I, I started helping to, to put that together, making sure people knew about it. And then um, at I, Jeff Elkner, who is another person in the Python world who did education very early on, he and I ended up going to a lot of education conferences, the big education conferences in the States to talk about Python. Um, you know, just one thing after another. Uh, eventually, I. Um, I foolishly said to the person who was then the chair of the PSF, you know, you've done a lot for me. Is there anything I can do to help you all out? Uh, and he said, well, yes, I'd like to have a poster session at PyCon. You want to organize that? Uh, and I, I'd asked, what could I do? I couldn't say no. Uh, so um, I, I did organize the poster session and, and that that was a challenge, but it worked. And so then after that, I, I had the idea of doing the uh, education summit. And then we did the, the intro to sprints thing. And you know, once you sort of start doing that, it becomes easier and easier. And then as you know, more and more people, um, I, in 2015, I decided to run for the board and I was elected and um, started serving as vice chair and then in 2017 um, 
there, you know, the, the previous chair had left. And so who's going to be chair? And well, I've kind of done some of it. I guess I will. And there wasn't a big competition, mind you. Nobody really <laughs> wanted the job. But um, so that, that's how I became chair of the board and um, have have been on there for a while. I mean, so yeah, that that's sort of the thing. I mean, I, I will tell you uh, that um, at, at the end of this year, my term is up and I will be rotating off of the board. So I will no longer be chair. Uh, as as kind of past chair, chair emeritus, whatever, I will be advising the board members and helping with the transition for probably the most of next year. So uh, it's not like I'm just leaving, but uh, I'm I'm moving on so that other people can have a chance to do that, and so that the PSF as an organization has that experience in transitioning from one leader to the next. I think that's something in open source projects and communities we don't do enough of. So I'm, I'm hopeful that having the chance to practice that will, will benefit the PSF going down the road. Yeah. So I think that kind of answers your question. I know I tend to run on a bit, but. Yeah, I, uh, I feel like you, the, the journey was full of kindness. You just like, you know, tell people oh, what I can do for you and you just like <laughs> become part of it. So, yeah. I guess, I guess, I don't know. Um, I keep looking around and seeing, well, we could do this, couldn't we? So yes. yeah, I guess that's true. Yeah, that's great. That's amazing. That's, I think this is very inspiring. So a lot of people, like, if you want to be involved in the community, just, just do it. Just say like, what I, I can do, then, then that's, there well, you are. <laughs> I, I think if you want to be involved in the community, trying to approach it from how can I help is probably going to get you a lot further than, um, I don't know, what position can I have or things yeah. like that. Yeah, I think that's that's very, very true. So, um, yeah, and other thing I'm very curious is the transcode community, because uh, I have briefly came across it at, uh, at you know, Palandinium and like, because I was in another room doing like some sprints, trying to like working very hard, and I walked past mm -hmm. the room, and it's like full of all these enthusiastic people, and I was like, wow, I I'm quite surprised. Like, but for me, because like I'm kind of still new to the community, I I think like, so like, can you can you tell us more about Transco? Like, what's what's the idea like behind like when you found right. it, and why is it important? Yeah, yeah um, uh, Transcode was was originally. Um, based on um, some hack hackathons that they did here in the U.S., um, created by by a man named uh, Courtney Ziegler, uh, who uh, created something called TransHack, and I, I went to the first one of those events and to to another one of those events, and that was, I'd say, particularly at a time where where trans and LGBT and and gender queer and all of those issues were not not as well known, and it was just an event that was dedicated to bringing the uh, people together and letting them be themselves in an environment where they weren't going to be hassled and they weren't going to be judged. And so, you know, in 2014, 2015, I was working in London, and I thought, well, gee, wouldn't it be great to do this here? Uh, and um, I, I hooked up with uh, with Jessica Rose, who's who's you know pretty pretty popular figure on Twitter these days, along with her, along with her goblin cats and things like that. And she has done events um, around the UK and she's like, well, sure, we could do that. Uh, so we worked together uh, on that. And um, it was, um, it was something so new that I felt that I basically met and had coffee or tea or a drink with practically every trans person I could find in London trying to interest people in this idea. But it did take off. And um, I think the thing that made it powerful is the same thing that makes things like Django Girls powerful. Um, you know, we talked about Brazil earlier. They have an Afro-Python initiative. And that is people who are marginalized, even if they're going to an accepting community, they're always then sort of different, the odd one out. It's always they are going to somebody else's experience. And that's always a bit of a strain. 
So we just wanted to recenter things around uh, LGBT, transgender, queer, non-binary folk and say, no, we're going to come together. We're going to do stuff that we're interested in. If you're allies, we would love to have you here. But this is really, you know, we are the default group for a change. Yes. And I think everybody finds that's just um, so refreshing to be able to just breathe and be yourself without worrying about what the majority is doing that it, it's it's really a, a powerful a powerful thing and you know that's i think we've now had mm, 14 15 trans codes around uh, we were going to have one at PyCon us this year um, so it's been it's been pretty powerful that way you know we don't Transcode has never had any money we've never really had much organization it really is just the idea of getting people together to uh, explore their interests in that kind of environment. And, you know, it's the same thing if you go to a Pi Ladies or Django Girls event. Uh, it's you don't have to worry about that fact that, you know, maybe you're the only woman in, in the group and that feels kind of weird because it does, uh, you know, that sort of thing. So, um, yeah, that that's kind of the idea behind it. And I think that's why it's been successful. Yeah, because I have been because I also run a um, help running an AI club for gender minority group. So but we always, you know, sometimes being challenged by guys like that doesn't belong to this group that they would be like um, questioning, like, oh, why do you have a segregated society for yourself? And I think it's difficult to explain uh, to, to people who doesn't, right. you know, who belongs to the majority mm -hmm. group that we need those. Um, yeah, it, it's it's not as though we're trying to hide from the rest of the world. The problem is we have to deal with the rest of the world all the rest of the time. This is just to get a little time to catch your breath. Yeah, I think that's very fair. That's that's a very good answer to this question that I always get from um, people who question why I can't join or like why I'm not like, well, you're also welcome, but you're not the, the right. you know the the host here. <laughs> so yeah. Exactly. Um, so yeah, that brings me to the question about the diversity and inclusion. So, um, so like, how does Python compare to to like in more you know general tech community? Because I know tech communities are like have one of the industry that is, that is more inclusive. Uh, but I want to see like if Python like where would you put Python um, compared to well, other tech communities? I'm I'm I guess. Tech communities have the possibility to be more inclusive. I would say a lot of times they don't live up to that possibility. Um, I think that Python does about as well as, as any that I know of. Uh, there, there are some, um, I think from what, what little I've seen, because it's just not something that I do, but from what little I've seen of like Golang communities and, and things like that, they certainly are, are, are in the same spirit. But um, I think we're, we're amongst the leaders in terms of the number of women presenting and attending our conferences in general. Um, certainly PyCon US has made big strides there. And um, I know that um, while well, even like Pylondinium and, and things like that, they were, they were very conscious of that as well. So um, I think that we are a leader. I think that in general, we are looked up to uh, as, as a leader. Um, uh, some of our code of conduct work and the way that we enforce code of conduct stuff is really uh, at, at the forefront, I think. And, you know, honestly, I think the reason for that is that um, for quite some time now, we have really been trying in every way that we can. Uh, it's, it's not just a case of, oh, sure, we'll welcome whoever happens to come through the door and that's diversity. It's more that we have been trying to find and bring people in and make them feel welcome. You need to do all of those things rather than just saying, oh, well, the door's open, come on in. Uh, you need to actually find them, make sure that the place is welcoming and, and then involve them once they get in. Yeah, I think that's very tricky because, yeah, it's for some people, the definition would be, like you said, just, oh, it's like, you know, everybody can go to it. Why why you have to take extra effort to make it accessible to 
everybody and make sure that everybody's safe. Because I think a lot of people overlook because maybe they are in a better position, you know, they are the majority, they just feel comfortable anywhere they go, but uh, they can't mm-hmm. overlook of some people do have needs, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so like time really flies. I think that's the last question that I'm asking. So I know that there's a lot of changes in the community. Like we mentioned before multiple times that PyCon US is going to be going, you know, um, well, we, we won't have uh, have it in Facebook, like planned it, but I know that we will have some um, online programs going on. We have the Hatchery her- uh, right. program. It's one of them. I'm running the uh, data science beginners workshop yes. for minorities. So that, mm-hmm. that's also happening yes. virtually. Yes. Cool. And um, also, uh, so I know that, you know, for you, you won't be going to conferences like uh, for, for a while uh, because of this. So uh, right. what are you doing right now? Like, uh, except going to um, Pi Amsterdam and give a talk there. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, I mean, so um... You actually already know the answer because we talked about it earlier, but uh, I am um, I am starting to stream uh, on on Twitch. It's um, twitch.tv slash uh, a um, I'm, I'm trying to do it weekly uh, and I, I'm calling it exploring Python right now. It's really about doing a little bit of live coding and poking at Python to help people form good mental models of how the language really works. So uh, the first one I did was uh, about uh, variables and how they're not like Java variables, say, or C variables, they're they're their own sort of thing. Um, And uh, coming up, I'm going to um, be building a class out of spare parts. Uh, And we will make iterators from scratch and we'll do some other things where we can just kind of say, okay, look, if we're understanding what the language does, we should be able to do this thing, right? Can we? Okay, if we can't, then what are we not understanding about how the way the language works? So um, I'm, I'm looking forward to that. And um, a couple of people have kind of prodded me that maybe I should try doing a session of that in, in Spanish as well. And I'm, I'm working up to that. I'm trying to yeah. get my courage up to do that as well. So I might do a separate one later on wow. uh, where I do that. But uh, it's just some way to, um, I, as a friend of mine said, that it's, it's, it's nice to have things like that because in these times it reminds you that there's somebody out there. And so, yeah, that's what I'm trying to do. Yeah, I think that's really, really inspiring. Uh, I, I really looking forward to like uh, go to the, your stream on Friday. I think the right. next one is coming up. Yeah. Yes, so... yes, yes. And it's it's Friday. <laughs> it's 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 actually at um, fourteen hundred uh, Chicago time, which is um, I think like nine o'clock in the evening. Um, nine or 10 in the evening, I don't remember which, in, 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 in the UK and in Europe UK, and things Europe. like that. And I know that's a little bit late, but we're all under lockdown. So where are you going on Friday yeah. night anyway? Yeah, you'll be so. surprised how many people stay up late like I am right now. <laughs> um, but but yeah, like I, I think it's a regular thing, right? Every fri- Friday, right? That's, that's the plan. I've done, okay. I've got the next one coming up on Friday. That will give me a streak of two so far. But yes, that's the plan. Yeah, I think the best thing to do is to uh, follow Naomi on um, on Twitch. I would post the link. Yep. And I hope if you're watching or if you catch up later, you can click on the link and follow. And I, I am sure that it would be very good. And like, it's the best time to learn Python now. So um, yeah, you have all these resources. Don't, don't let, let it go. just like pass by. So yeah so thank you so much naomi i think that's the end of the interview i'm so glad to have you and uh we want to see you more so please please uh, subscribe yeah okay so bye 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 right so uh that was a very good uh good interview and we got uh hey hello uh that's that's my friend uh i I believe you are Matthew, uh, uh, in in Berlin. Hi, hello there. Uh, thank you for uh, letting me know you're in the chat. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so um, so yeah, like after the interview, uh, we want to um, we have the least last session that I think uh, lays prepare 
for us. Yay, that's you. I recognize you. I remember you. I follow you on Twitch. That's why. Uh, yeah. So yeah, Lace uh, prepared this session for us actually because she was telling me that she is interested in you know because uh, because you know like Lace is amazing. Like anything like could um, you know she's interested in knowing anything. Like she 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 learned a lot and then she want to uh, study like about differences of IDEs. <laughs> and I think that's good. Like that's good. Like I don't care that much. I'm a very simple person. But she did like a. A full video of, of them, so I'll I'll let you drive. I'll let you show us what you found out. <laughs> wow! Thank you, thank you very much. Like I, I don't think I'm that amazing. I think you're much more amazing. But anyway, uh, so yeah, the question, the the whole story. By the way, guys, my internet is a little bit laggy, so just bear with me and have a little bit of patience. I'm sorry, ISPs. What can what, what can you do? Anyway, so I was watching uh, Chuck's Zero to Hero, Python Zero to Hero, on a few weeks, a few Sundays ago, and she was talking about installation on a machine, and she told me that she likes to use um, Atom. And the first thing that came to my mind was like, why Atom? Why are you not using anything else? Not that there is anything wrong with Atom, but I was like, but why this one? Because I know that your Python skills are absolutely incredible. So I was like, well, must, that must be a reason. And I know that Stefan um, also uses uh, Atom. And I was like, mm, these people with these Atom skills, I, I, they, but there must be something over there. So I got really curious to find out then what would be the most popular Python ID, uh, what most people use, why they use what they use, what's the basic difference between them. And talking to Chuck, she was like, well, do a showcase and bring it to me to be quiet. I was like, okay, that's fair enough then. So there we go. That's the showcase, guys. So um, basically, so doing a little bit of research, what I found then was those, um, those two research that were done, um, the Python developer research and Python developer survey, and then the state of developers as well, I think. So it's 2019 and 2018. And the 2019 one had 7,000 devs interviewed. And the 2018 one had around 20,000 devs interviewed in around 150 countries. So I tried to use 2018 data because there are people, but I also tried to use 2019 data because it's more related to Python. And although it's less people being interviewed, it's a little bit more relevant to what we're doing to our, to our case. So with no further ado, let's go results. Um, so, no surprise, um, apparently PyCharm and VS Code are, are up there, so they're the ones that people use, uh, that devs use the most for Python. Um, this is a comparative between 2017 and 2018. Um, and yes, but then among those, we also have Vim. I didn't do that much research on Vim because, well, well it, Vim. It's really not my thing. So. You know, Vim, you only need to know one thing is to how to exit Vim. That's the only thing you need to know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I know it's everyone asks the same question. You go to Stack Overflow, you put Vim on it, and everyone is like, how do I get out of it? How do yeah. I exit? <laughs> so, and I don't know how to exit Vim. So, we will not talk about it then. Okay. Uh, <laughs> And then uh, Sublime, I also didn't do that much research on Sublime because there was only that many people around it. I did do a little bit of research on Atom because of you and the other, the other really great Python developers I know that decided to use that. And then I decided to put an add-on and talk a little bit about online IDs as well. So, Do you know anything um, about um, First of all, Greenie? then I started... Do you know anything about Greeny? Because like one of the viewers' uh, the favorite, G E A N Y. I have never heard about that one. So. G E U G E A N Y. No. I don't. Oh, okay. No, I don't. Sorry, we are not covering that. <laughs> oh, there's a link there. Okay, I will no, check that out I'm afterwards. Sorry. Thank you so much. But yeah, go ahead. Uh, tell us what you found out. Perfect. So I will summarize things then, and then we do the last three minutes on that, because I'm also curious about that one now. <laughs> okay, fine. Okay. Cool. So uh, every, everything is 
open source, from the ones that I'm talking about here, everything is open source. Um, everything is free. PyCharm, though, has a non-community edition that uh, can be paid if you're a dev and you like if you're a professional dev or you have a company and you like to use it the professional edition uh they do charge for it good news is they have loads of uh, discounts and sales and brackets that you can get in and like special cases that you can get in even if you're switching from another um professional id into pycharm they give you 25 percent discount if you're a student or a teacher, they give you for free the professional edition. Um, if you're learning, it seems like you also have, like it's, it's so many of them. Anyway, have a look. Um, my favorite part of, of PyCharm is the tip of the day. So it's basically you open, the, you open your, your ID to do your work of the day and then there is a tip of the day. And like, oh, something new, I can just try it. And, I love, but then I was sharing with my media colleague over there, that, that one with the green screen that you're looking at, and she hates it. She really don't like any pop-up screens on top, on, on, her, on her monitor. So I yeah. guess it's not everyone that likes it. Yeah, like for me, I would just want to, like when I open um, my ID, I don't want to be interrupted. I just, see. so, yeah. <laughs> Can you hear me? Okay, fair yeah, sorry. enough. Sorry. <laughs> it's Let's a bit delayed. Let's actually let's happen. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yes. <laughs> and then, perfect. So, Atom then. So, Atom uh, was written in Node.js. Um, and is, it's not as widely adopted, but then the people that actually decide to use it, they're quite good at Python. Like, usually they're quite good at Python. So, there, there must be a, a, a thing. I, I don't really know because I don't really use it, but it seems to be quite simple, as Chuck was telling me. And it seems to be quite straightforward as well, and the fact that it's a great community. Um, but so, yeah, fans. Uh, then I found out that there is also a thing called, um, there is a Python extensor for Eclipse. Where you can just install, it's a plugin, and you can do uh, Jiten and what's the iron iron python in eclipse as well which i did not know because i use eclipse for java there's a little bit of uh, objective oriented programming with java and i do i don't really love eclipse it was interesting to see that i could just install a plugin and start using that editor for python as well uh then vs code our beloved vs code super light highly customizable so kind of the same the same story as atom uh, you can just install plugins and transform the entire id to whichever language you need or whichever whichever thing that you're trying to do now um and a good thing about vs code as well is that it if you're using conda or anaconda it automatically implements that environment for you so you don't necessarily need to do so when you're installing anaconda if you just toggle that that um, box added to my path straight away in Windows anyway. You're definitely going to have an issue when you're trying to uninstall it. I've been there. Um, so it's recommendable that you do not toggle that box when you're installing Anaconda on your Windows system. Uh, but then you can just incorporate that into VS Code and it becomes a, a whole, then it's, it's added to your path. It's, it's quite cool. Um, so yeah, those are the GUI ones. Then um, I did a little bit of a thing as well with text editors. So we have the IDLE, there is the basic, the most common one that comes um, default with Python. As um, OK Debugger, it's syntax highlighting as well and auto completion. So it like has the basic tools and it's quite good, but it's basic. Um, new Emacs, uh, it's, they seem quite interesting. I couldn't figure out if they're like if you can install them in any operating system or if like they're they're as good in any other operating system. Emacs, I know um, my colleagues using it. They are using Linux, so maybe it works best, or even like just work on Linux. That may be the case. Yeah, that's what I yeah that's what I I guess as well, but I don't really know. Like I did a little bit of research, but no one was actually able to tell me if 
there's not that many people that installed on Windows and Mac and were there just to tell me if it was good enough or not. Yeah. Couldn't find them. Uh, then uh, we have online IDEs as well. So there is Gitpod. I don't know if you've heard about Gitpod, uh, but it's very, very, very similar to VS Code on the Google side. So it looks almost exactly like it. Um, and there, but there is a little bit of a problem with uh, Gitpod is that you cannot start a project empty. So you cannot just open that page in the workspace and start, you need to download a template from the basic website and then you can start program coding from there. Uh, it's great, it generates, it opens a virtual machine for you so you can start coding and then you have like there's um, share running space, I um, options as well and it's quite interesting and it's quite good but if your internet connection is not that great you're probably going to have an issue opening up and there is also the fact that after 14 minutes your connection is going to if you're not active your connection is going to go and there is a, a chance it's not really a big chance but there is a chance that you're going to miss you're going to lose some code there uh my favorite thing about gitpod is that you can just do this so look this is a regular github repo you can just go to the beginning of the of the address bar and type gitpod.io and then hash and that's going to open if you're logged in of course that's going to open GitPod, a GitHub window with your github repo inside already ready to edit so that's quite interesting when you're trying to do pair programming with people around and uh, they need you to edit something in their code or they don't know what the book is coming from. We do this in class. It's, it's quite cool. And then last but not least, we have uh, REPO. REPO is actually my first contact with online IDEs. And the basic, the most amazing thing about REPO is that you can just choose your language over here. It's quite like you have a very extensive list of languages you can choose. And then you can simply just start coding create your Apple and then just start coding. It's quite cool. Uh, it's created. The internet is not that great, guys. So, but there we go. Then from here onwards. And then let me just show you. You see, it's still trying to download the, the images for the virtual machine for Git. So that's what I mean when the connection, the internet connection is not great. It takes a while. Perfect. Now, those last two minutes, would you mind telling me again the name of that? Of yes, that actually, that I, I can uh, I can share, like, if I can share my screen, I can show you uh, that, uh, you know. But... So, yeah, so if, uh, yes, give me one second. I am bringing things over here. Right, okay, let me share my screen mm -hmm. and, yep. So this one is suggested by our viewer, 94, and uh, we have this, uh, yeah, I, I still don't know how to pronounce it, Guinea, G yeah, I think. So it kind of reminds me of Guinness for some reason. So I, like, judging by the look of it, I really like it because it's uh, it's very lightweight. <laughs> I like things that is lightweight and simple, like Atom. And um, yeah, so that's, that's my first impression. Nothing much, because I really don't know that much. Um, but mm. it seems alright, and also like uh, there was a discussion in the chat about Emacs, and I really mm -hmm. think that Emacs is like Vim, right? So it's like only for people who are super, you know, um, uh, you know, super optimized in their typing, and uh, usually they're like people who code really, really well, <laughs> not me. <laughs> so yeah, right. So I think um but cool. Interesting. Yeah, I like that one. And I think it's I think it's genie because there is a lamp okay. like you know Aladdin Aladdin's uh, genie. Yeah. So yeah, yeah I, think so. I don't it's, know. It's it maybe it's genie. Well. Genie. I, I just like miss drinking too much, so maybe <laughs> that's why I can't pronounce it. Um Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's genie. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's but it spells okay. like it doesn't okay. spell with the I E, so it's like it's really uh, Yep. Okay. Um, so I think that's it for today. And it has been a pressure. I, I, I love the fact that there are like chats like happening. 
So thank you so much if you have been, you know, um, typing in the chat. I really like to see people reacting because otherwise just like me and Vase like casually, you know, um, talking and uh, we can do that at any time, you know, but uh, having you in the chat is, uh, I really, really appreciate that. And also we have our Twitter account. We are like, you know, at Meat, Meat Pie, so with capital M, M and P. And a hey, <laughs> yeah, you just type yay. We have uh, <laughs> really good. okay, and also we have uh, we, what do we have? Love you guys. Oh, we have we have Dev Tool, so I will upload all this video on Dev Tool. So if you miss any, you can go to Dev Tool, go to our Meet Me Pie community again, search for us, and you'll see all these um videos. We also think about uh, making a podcast, so we have the recordings, you know, uh, before with all these good interviews that we want to maybe make it more accessible to more people um, but that would really depends on how much time we had uh, I'm, I'm extremely busy uh, so let's see if I have time you know uh, Reese, like uh, very very soon yes <laughs> Emacs and Vim yeah I know I know so yeah I think uh, I think that's it so um, yeah so thank you so much oh, again I, so. I can't stress how much I appreciate if you joined the chat yeah <laughs> yes it's very so stay stay if you're on the chat i will be staying in the chat as well but i have to go because uh we have a meeting i have a meeting at work so um yeah so thank you so much i'll see you soon uh, next week and or maybe the work yeah yeah okay bye-bye bye 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 bye, bye.